Hello YouTube. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, how to set up the camera. Uh, basically, we're just going to have a static camera that's on top of the character, not perfectly on top. It's not like orthographic kind of 2D. Uh, it's going to be on an angle, but uh, yeah. So I'm just going to show you guys how to set this up. It's going to be a very simple camera, uh, but it's I hope it's going to turn out pretty good. I think it's going to be uh, pretty good. Uh, compared to other cameras that I've shown you. And what I'm going to use here is something called a slow parent. I'll show you guys uh, that later. Um, it's something that Mr. V Teacher told me about in, a, in the comment section on one of my videos on my camera tutorial. Um, I actually didn't show you guys how to use that in my tutorial because I didn't know it. So credit goes to Mr. V Teacher for it being used in this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we're going to add is a cube. And this cube's job is going to be, it's not really going to have a significant role. Um, basically, it's just going to be parented to our ball. Uh, and it's basically going to be what controls the camera. Uh, okay, so here we have our cube. Um, what we want to do is vertex parent it. Now, you know the normal parent, uh, which you can just select the cube and then the sphere which I actually showed you in my camera tutorial and you can just hit control P and parent it. What the normal parent does is it makes the cube move and rotate when the sphere moves and rotates. That's not what we want because the cu the camera is going to be parented to this cube uh, and we don't want the camera to rotate with the sphere because if you remember with our logic we set it up to we set the ball up to rotate so when the ball is going to rotate and go rolling around then so will the camera and it's going to be weird and annoying. Uh, it's going to be almost non-playable. Okay, so let's get started with this. Um, first thing we're going to do is select our cube, then select our sphere. This is called a vertex parent, which I've showed, you, which you might have seen in my uh, camera tutorial. Hit tab. Uh, again, you select the cube first, then the sphere. Hit tab, and you should go into edit mode. Uh, you know, uh, for the sphere, right? So select a vertex, any vertex. It doesn't really matter, and hit Control P. Now you'll notice that it's going to say make vertex parent. That's what we want. Uh, so now this cube is going to follow the sphere, but it's not going to follow the rotation. You can actually test this out if you... Whoops. Okay. You can test this out if you go... Let's just change this to 3D so we can have a convenient ready camera view. Actually, no, it's fine like this. Um, let's see. Okay, so when we test this out... Whoa. Oh yes, of course. Don't forget that the cube here is trapping our ball, and our ball is set to use uh, real-time physics. So whenever it's going to spawn uh, while it's colliding with an object, it's immediately going to bounce off. And because the cube is parent, it's going to stick with the ball. And that would create a constant bound problem. So first thing we're going to do before we test is select the cube. Make sure you have it selected, and click Ghost in the physics section in... Uh, what is this in the properties panel? Yes. Okay, so make sure it's set to ghost, and this is just going to make it not detect any collision. Okay, or you could just make it no collision. Uh, I think that's a better way to make it not detect a collision. And now what you'll notice is when you hit P, it doesn't affect the uh, the ball's uh, collision. It goes down for whatever reason, but when we move our ball, the cube doesn't rotate, which is what the vertex parent does. Uh, now I have to figure out why it's, why it moves down like that. I actually haven't faced this before. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. So, yeah, I'll just remove this cube, add a new one, and hopefully it turns out fine. Control P. Oh, yes, I think it's because, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, let's test this out. Make sure the cube is a ghost. Okay, it doesn't really matter if it's lower because the cube is not going to appear. We're just going to set it to invisible. Uh, okay, what I could do basically is move it up a bit. And that makes it more decent, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the cube is going to be invisible, as I said. So just check invisible in the physics section. Uh, hit, hit P and it shouldn't show up. If it shows up, you've got a problem. you got to figure out why it's not working. It should be invisible once you hit invisible. Uh, and you know invisible is selected when it's grayed out. So now that we have our cube set up, um, what we're going to do is move our camera into its position. So 
what I like to do when I move the camera around is have a camera view on the side just so I know where the camera is going and what it's looking at. Uh, I'm going to hit Alt G which resets the camera's position, drag it up. Also I'm going to hit Alt R which resets the rotation of the camera and you should know that G is for movement, the hotkey for movement, and R is the hotkey for rotation. Uh, okay, so I'm going to press RX to rotate the camera on the X axis. Uh, move it around a bit just to make sure that it's looking at our sphere, cube, sphere, whatever. Um, and it's kind of too zoomed in here. So I'm not going to move the camera in this case. I'm going to change its perspective, its focal length. So what I'm going to do, and you can actually notice a change in the camera when I drag this. I'm going to decrease the focal length so it sees, th so that the camera would actually see, like the player could see more. And you notice that it expands and like it stretches the camera pretty much. Uh, so just choose whatever focal length you like. The default is 35, so just make sure you change that. Uh, you can change this to orthographic, but that doesn't look too good uh, in 3D games, so I'd suggest keeping it as perspective. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Now what we're going to do is have our camera selected and select the cube, which is parented to the sphere. So we're going to normal parent this. And this is just to help us with our effect because a glitch happens when you just vertex parent and use the slow parent tool. So now that the camera is parented to the cube, normal parented to the cube, we're going to select the camera, go to the object properties here, and go down to animation hacks. So this is the slow parent feature that I'm talking about. Um, uh, as I said, uh, Mr. V teacher is the one who told me about it, so uh, credit goes to him for... Uh, using this in this video and uh, if you guys have any other helpful comments uh, you're more than welcome to write it down because I could use helpful comments um, I don't know everything about blender so whatever you know I I'd, I'd be glad to uh, hear that and possibly credit you for whatever I learn later on in videos whatever I teach later on so let's go back to our animation hacks you want to check slow parent and set the offset to about 10 or you can choose whatever uh, setting you want I'm gonna keep it as 10 and what the offset does is it makes the camera uh, less responsive when it comes to movement so it's uh, its response time is a bit slower so you'll notice this here um, when I press P you'll notice that the camera is kind of like dragging around instead of just being hard parented to the cube or to the sphere so we'll press P and there's the effect that I'm talking about. This is what the slow parent does. You can see it's responding. It's moving with the sphere. But it's not responding fast enough, uh, making it move smoothly. Okay, so if you make the offset, if you, like, put the offset as 50 or whatever, it's going to be way too slow that the sphere is probably going to move out of the screen uh, quickly. Now, obviously, it could move out of the screen in this case as well uh, because we have acceleration because there's the force applied. Um, but it's not going to happen in our case because we're doing a maze game and it, the sphere is basically going to be in a confined space. So that's it for the camera tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more. And uh, just to let you guys know, in the next video we'll be starting with our maze. We'll be creating the maze and adding textures to it. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time.